All right, some Democrats uh, crying foul ahead of tomorrow's Supreme Court confirmation hearing for Brett Kavanaugh. Why they say they're not hearing the whole story when it comes to Kavanaugh's background. This is Republicans now start to go on defense. Brett Kavanaugh for a long time, I think he was an inspired choice. I think he'll look at what the ethics are with regard to uh, a Supreme Court justice. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been previous questions. Justice Kagan had a similar question on Obamacare-related litigation, and he'll do what the uh, codes of conduct and ethics of a Supreme Court justice require. Senator Amy Klobuchar speaking out on the paper trail for Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Senate Judiciary Committee is getting set to start hearings for Kavanaugh tomorrow. Democrats have been quite vocal about the 100,000 documents the White House has so far refused to hand over. So let's bring in Elizabeth Wydra on this, president of the Constitutional Accountability Center. Um, good to see you today. The, um, you know, the two sides to this are, I guess, quite obvious. On, on the one side, you have Republicans saying, listen, we have so many documents and decisions with Brett Kavanaugh, then you know, we don't, we don't know what to do with them all. It's hard to even get through them all. And on the other side, the Democrats are saying, hey, listen, we want to see everything. What do you make of the role executive privilege appears to be playing? Well, this really shouldn't be a partisan issue. You know, it, it's incredibly important when Congress is playing its advice and consent role as required by the Constitution that they have all of the information in order to give their proper advice. If you were asking a friend for advice and you only gave a fraction of the story, you probably wouldn't get very good advice. And we're talking here about a lifetime appointment to the highest court in this land. So, yes, it's a lot of documents, but Brett Kavanaugh has been in the Washington establishment for a long time before he was on the bench of the D.C. Circuit. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of information out there. And because of the both rush to have the hearings that we've seen from the Republican majority in the Senate and from Judiciary Chairman Chuck Grassley, um, you know, not even the documents that Grassley himself asked for from the archives are ready yet. They said they would need till October 1st, right. but they're going ahead anyway. And then also the documents that there has been executive privilege asserted to keep secret. And notably, President Obama, when this came to Elena Kagan, didn't assert executive privilege to block documents that were related to her tenure in the White House. All right, let's talk a little time. bit more about that particular point, the executive privilege. I'll show you what uh, Senator Chuck Schumer had to say first, and then we'll get back to talking about it. He says, we're witnessing a Friday night document massacre. President Trump's decision to step in last moment and hide 100,000 pages of Judge Kavanaugh's records from the American public, not only unprecedented in the history of the Supreme Court nominations, it has all the makings of a cover-up. Um, that's Senator Schumer's uh, take. You mentioned Elena Kagan. I guess the, the difference here might be the role that Brett Kavanaugh was playing at the time in working in the Bush White House, that these documents relate to that role. So, at least as far as I understand it, you would know better, they would be protected by executive privilege, right? The administration's within its rights. Well, certainly, just because someone was working within the White House, uh, you know, Elena Kagan was a lawyer in the, in the White House uh, during her time there, doesn't mean that the documents should necessarily be shielded from public release, especially when you're talking here about such an important role as a Supreme Court justice. And, you know, I think it's important to note that Kavanaugh himself said that his time as staff secretary in the Bush White House mm -hmm. was perhaps the most formative of his career and would have an effect on the way that he views the Constitution and this country. Right. And during the time he was there, they dealt with incredibly important issues related to the job he's applying for right now. Well, those documents the war on terrorism, been, surveillance state, they haven't abortion. haven't even been requested, right, the, for the time he was staff secretary, which is, by the way, that's a totally different argument about whether they should have been requested or not. But I believe the documents the in Democrats would have requested them. Yeah. Uh, understood. Are before that, in his time in the White House Counsel's Office. So which would be protected, which was, my, which was sort of my earlier question, wouldn't they be protected by executive privilege when he's working in the counsel's office? You know, again, President Obama could have uh, asserted privilege. Right. He didn't. Um, you know, here I think it's a choice, um, and it's hard to evaluate whether or not that privilege is being properly asserted when we can't, you know, see the documents and you have Bush lawyers themselves going right. through the documents. So, 
it, it's really unfortunate that we're not going to have the most transparent process possible because this is so important and you shouldn't rush through a lifetime appointment. This is too important to simply do a rush job. They no, should I understand, do a, the, I definitely the, right understand job. The, the argument. Let me get one more question into you while we have you, and that's a broader one on how you see this all kind of playing out. I thought Senator Orrin Hatch had a somewhat interesting quote when he was asked about all of this. He compared it, maybe it's just because I like sports analogies, but he compared it to a basketball game. He says, like the Democrats were trailing by, you know, 30 points with a few minutes to go, and they kept fouling. They kept trying to stop the clock thinking they could win, but in reality, they weren't going to. That, if anything, maybe it'll be close, but Brett Kavanaugh is going to be confirmed. Is that a fair kind of estimation of how we see things playing out here before October? I think it depends. You know, the American people generally support the right that is protected in Roe versus Wade. There are Republican senators who are pro-choice. And because this seat on the Supreme Court is likely going to be the deciding vote on issues related to abortion and LGBTQ rights and privacy and environmental mm -hmm. protections and so much more, I think that the hearings are going to be incredibly important in getting to the bottom of what Kavanaugh really thinks is protected in the Constitution right. and trying to get substantive answers out of him instead of, you know, sort of blanket statements about, I respect settled law. Well, law is settled until the Supreme Court unsettles it, so that's mm -hmm. very much still an open question. All right, we'll cover it, of course. Elizabeth Weidra, thanks for the time today. We appreciate it. Great to be with you.